So it's my second season with AC Regiana, and last season we got ourselves promoted to Seti Bay. But imagine my surprise just a few weeks into the offseason when our club gets taken over by Indian investor Nikhil Rao, who basically tells everyone that they will stop at n nothing to make Regiana one of the greatest horses in both domestic and continental football. My friends, the bald fraud is gone, and our new chairman basically not only cleared our debts, they gave us an extra 15 million on the bank budget. I didn't hesitate to start putting some of those new funds to use as two of our signings in January officially arrived in Gabriele Bellotti and Damiano Cancellieri, plus we signed quite a few other youngsters listed here, but among the key signings are Jacopo da Riva, Matteo Stoppa, and Karim Zadadka among them. We also did make Jacopo Pellegrini's loan spell from last year in a permanent stay with the club, but with our previous goalies being out of contract and one going back to the being on loan, uh, we had a decision to make in terms of who would be between the pipes this season. So uh, between either new signing Andreas Jungdahl or our best youth prospect from last season in Michelle Ecolio. In the end, we decided that Colio probably would do the trick here even though he was much younger and nowhere near as experienced. What can I say? But when it comes to the children, Vijana. it's for the children. We teach the children. With the Seti Bear promotion, we also do find ourselves in the qualifiers for the Coppa Italia, and we start off against a Seti Se opponent in Novara Football Club. And then out of nowhere, our chairman just decides to give us an extra 20 million in the bank. And to me, I see it as a sign that maybe we shouldn't just settle for avoiding a relegation. Maybe we can do a whole lot more this year. With that in mind, we beat Novara 2-1 in order to qualify for the first round of the Coppa Italia, which then matched us against the Serie A team in Empoli FC. But during that game, thanks to Petar Stojanovic's uh, big mistake of getting himself sent off with a sliding tackle, uh, we were able to capitalize and hold strong for a 1-0 result and an upset against the Serie A side in the process. That momentum was something we used as we started the regular season in Serie B to start off strong with four wins in a row against Cagliari, Como, Catanzaro, and Pisa to start the year. But then we get a taste of reality that this is not going to be anything like Serie C as we draw against Crotone, lose against Citadella, and draw against Perugia to end September in a down note. October does hold some better results to start, and we're keeping pace, but the one game that's been marked on the calendar for every single Regina diehard since their promotion is the first game of the season against Parma. The first Derby de Lenza since May 2017. The name of the Derby derives from the Enza River, which forms the boundary of the provinces of Parma and Reggio Emilia. The rivalry itself stems from a historical rivalry between the cities of Parma and Reggio Emilia, which is transcendent of sport as a whole. But in recent years of the Derby, Parma has won uh, the encounters, along with the fact that in terms of the amount of trophies and overall success, Parma does have us beat. But then, the boys decided that we were just gonna walk into their home and stomp them for one. We are not messing around anymore. We are coming for this entire... <coughs> well, losing one of our starting strikers isn't good. But hey, there's no need to freak out. We do have the depth. Everything is gonna be fine. Four to six days later. Every time, man. Every goddamn time! <sighs> we cannot escape the injury bug every year, and I hate it. So, with our November results being mixed, as well as the injury bug to worry about, I decided it was about time to dive into the transfer market for the January a key defender that can play in our full Italian strategy and some backup tactics in our pockets such as a prototypical 4-3-3 Gegen press or a cautious take on a 4-4-2 would be necessary. And so I went ahead and got Juan, who is a Brazilian defender playing in Sassuolo for about 1.8 million. We also decided to make Andrea hit Ristov's stay uh, go from a loan to a permanent one starting next season, so that's pretty neat. And then uh, December comes along, and with it, we start off surviving against uh, Ternana, and we do take the early lead against Pau, and then this happened. Ah! 
I just have one thing I would like to say to Nicola Zanellato right now. I HATE YOU! Benevento beating us at home 2-0 after that game isn't an inspiring sign, but we do bounce back by somehow getting a clean sheet against Sassuolo, who are right on our tail in the standings. Now, uh, by the stats on the screen that you see here, you probably noticed that the name of Sassuolo Stadium is the exact same as ours, and that in this fixture, we were considered the away team. <laughs> uh, we'll circle back to this one later. Uh, there's some history here. Next up, uh, we get our second round match in the Coppa Italia against Cagliari, which comes down to the wire as a goal for each side uh, came during the second half, and we ended up taking this whole thing to penalties. Somehow, our now 16-year-old goalie manages to hold his ground and makes a save during the PKs, and with our team confirming all five chances, we advance to the third round of the Coppa Italia. Gotta say, it feels pretty good to be holding our own so far, when expectations were just to be competitive in it. So hey, maybe this means that we might get another Seti B side, or a mid-table side A side like we did with Empoli. AC Milan at the San Siro to boot? <laughs> I just want to know how, man. How? Now, with this bit of news out of the way, our next game see us get shut out by both Bari and Cagliari at home in Seti B. So, with injuries and inconsistencies piling up, uh, the winter transfer window is one in which I needed to make something happen. Then, I took a deep deep look at our regular tactic. Now, the full Italian tactic uh, does feature a target forward as one of the striker positions. That's normally either been Pellegrini or Montalto playing in it, but I wanted a more long-term answer at that position moving forward. So I sent the scouts far and wide to try and find us our next target man for this January window. The wins did start uh, piling up again during this month, but with the Milan game looming at the end of January, and our chances at Coppa Italia glory being most likely at death's door, it was at that time in which I reviewed the footage from our earlier games this year, and realized that when we played Pisa, uh, that the answers I was looking for really were right underneath my nose. Lorenzo Luca was still there. Ajax did not, in fact, buy him after his loan spell with them last season. So I knew what I had to do. So with the remaining money that we had left from the deals for midfielders Kana Coventry from Torino and Michele Colocolo from Ascoli confirmed uh, during the January window, we ended up going with a full core press approach between the transfer fee, league appearances, legal bonuses, etc. And on deadline day, with 10 or so hours to go. And I have waited a long time to do this. We got it! We got it! Thanks to all of that, uh, Luca was able to suit up and debut in the Coppa Italia game against AC Milan. And well, I have some good news and some bad news. The good news is that Lorenzo Luca did score on his debut with AC Reggiana. The bad news, though, is that Milan also scored. They, in fact, score twice. And thus, we are eliminated from the Coppa Italia. But while losing out of the Coppa Italia is a bittersweet pill, uh, we are in contention for one of the two automatic promotion spots in Seri B. And having a 6 with 7 hoss of a human being as our target man can only help matters moving forward. And Luca definitely seems to thrive in the role because for the next couple of games, the man is an absolute machine with seven goals in six games total as we win four out of five before our next big game. Another Derby de la Lenza, except this time it's in our house against Parma. So go figure, we blow a 2-0 lead and end up with a 2-2 draw out of it. We do bounce back against Salernitana, but a 2-2 draw against Hellas Verona is not exactly ideal to end the month. With 7 games left to go in the season and the race for automatic promotion spots being between us, Sassuolo, Hellas Verona, and Ternana, 
we do ourselves some favors by defeating Brescia and Parlemo with Lorenzo Lucas scoring four goals in the process, but the twisted ankle curse strikes yet again as Panaman does get injured in practice and we are without him now for the rest of the season at its most crucial time. We definitely feel his absence in the game against Ternana as we have to rescue a draw late and with it we lose our spot at the top of the table to Sassuolo. The race comes down to the wire with four games left to go but the point differential between second and third place is enough that if we can beat Spau, we do at least guarantee promotion to Serie A in some way, shape and form. And we do just that by beating them 2-0 and with it, we are going to Serie A next season, baby. Let's go. While the excitement is in the air to where our own base chairman throws in another 9 million into our coffers, we do still have three games to go and with it, a chance to win the Serie B championship to go up in style. And Luca understands that assignment as he scores four out of five goals uh, during the 5-1 win against Benevento and with Sassuolo also winning 4-0 against Regina, it does set up a showdown in the second to last game of the season where the winner will have the Serie B championship in their trophy case to go along with promotion. Now, I mentioned earlier that we'd circle back to Sassuolo once we got to this point, so let's talk for a minute. While Reggiana was experiencing a lack of success and financial troubles during the 2000s, Sassuolo was a club on the rise which dragged itself from the dredges a Serie D to go all the way to Serie A by 2013 back to Mape, which was a chemical manufacturing company that just so happened to purchase what was then Stadio Cita del Tricolore in 2013 in order to give Sassuolo a stadium that could accommodate Serie A crowds compared to their original stadium. Then they even renamed it uh, Mape Stadium, Cita del Tricolore, and Reggiana Ultras have been salty ever since. Now, there are way more details to the story, but at the end of the day, this is a chance to exorcise some demons and show up the guys who make us pay rent on this stadium, so we make it a point in the second to last game of the season to not only just win, but win it with style by beating them 4-2. And with that victory, we have seized the Seti Bed Championship, guaranteeing ourselves promotion and doing so while stomping Sassuolo in the process. I'm not even mad that we lost to Bari in the last game of the season. We've done what we needed to do for the year here. Now, the promotion to Seti A, uh, admittedly, came a lot faster than what I expected, but we have to establish ourselves as a side that can, at minimum, hang within the mid table of Seti A uh, next season. Once we've done that, who knows? Sky's the limit.